Hello, my friends. I hope that this video finds you well. My name is Tasha. This is your first time here. And I don't need to say that because my name is in the title. Hello, my friends. Happy New Year if you are watching this in 2024. It is a couple of days before the first day of the year, and I am so excited. I have a very ambitious TBR that I want to share with you guys right here. I just think that I should show you guys how crazy January is going to be for me. I have no idea how I'm going to read all of these books, and I've been contemplating do I want to share, don't I want to share, but I thought it would be fun to share. I don't often share TBRs because my reading life is so crazy but here we go we're going to take a stab at it and let's just go ahead and get started so currently i'm reading the eye of the world i started this one christmas night i've only read the prologue so far i am on just i just i'm on cloud nine i absolutely adore this series i'm a little afraid that the first two seasons which i have watched the first two seasons of the eye of the world twice or the wheel of time twice on prime video i love every single character sometimes it's difficult to tell who's doing this for good who's doing this for bad everyone is morally gray and i absolutely love that i think the show was cast very very well but i'm afraid that the first two seasons of the show are going to take up like four books and these books are not slim whatsoever but i am here for the ride so far the prologue has been intriguing i'm glad to see that there were not like any name changes thus far with the characters and it seems to be going along so far but it's too early to tell i've never read any of the books i've had the first two books sitting on my shelves probably for like close to three years now but i'm presently reading this one and hopefully i will end the year with this one it may spill over a little bit into 2024 but i'm okay with that but let's get to the rest of this very ambitious TBR. So this little baby showed up on my doorstep the other day. This is the Illumicrate version of The Principle of Moments by Esme Jakaimi Pearson. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. This is said to be perfect for fans of Becky Chambers, V.E. Schwab, and N.K. Jemison. That is a lot to swallow. I... I'm open to this one. I will say that this one is a sci-fi fantasy. We're following two characters and I know it has something to do with time travel. One of the characters that we are following is from the year 6066 and the second character is from the year 1812. That's really all I know about this one. I'm going to try and go into this one blind. I do believe that this is also a day view. Yes, it has the beautiful sprayed edges. I'm sure you all have seen this book around with everyone doing unboxings. Next, I have Her Deep Reverence, Pregnant by a Black Mafia Dawn. This is Black Mayhem Mafia Saga Book 2. This one is the second in a series. The first one is In His Possession, which I read, I want to say, early 2022. This one also says that I have completed this book on Goodreads, which I believe I did get through about half of the book, but I did not finish it. However, I own the first five books in the series. Essentially, we are following a family uh, who's third generation they're all in the mafia and we're following each of them as they fall in love and they're trying to balance love and the mafia the first book we follow the head of the mafia and now we are following his brother Hassan with another young lady who we met in the first book I finished the fifth season for the second time last week and so I thought I would just go ahead and try to continue on with the series. This is also going to be a reread for me. I have yet to read book three and that's because book two definitely went over my head. This is The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. This follows a mother who comes home to find her son dead and she knows that her husband is responsible for killing their son. He's also run off with their daughter. The first book is one of those books where you just you're either here for it or you're not, but you have to kind of keep going on because it eventually does all wrap up and make sense and it continues on with book two, but it can be a hard book to follow, especially because part of the book is told in second person. So you are actually one of the characters you're being told where you are and how you feel and what you're doing and what you should do next. So this one has definitely took the world by storm all three of the books in this trilogy did receive the Hugo Award. And so I just kind of want to tidy up some of the series that I know I own all of the books in the series. It's like, why have them sitting here? But yeah. 
I did reread Son of the Storm by Suyi Davis Okinboa, and this is the sequel to or I should say in The Nameless Republic, that's the name of the trilogy, and this is Warrior of the Wind. Son of the Storm takes place in a city known as Basa. Basa is this rich and thriving city, but they have their secrets. And a part of their, I guess, strong hand, you would say, has to do with the fact that anyone who migrates into the city can never tell their story of where they come from. And the people who migrate into the city are also treated a certain way way we're following Donso. Donso is a bright scholar he has a bright future in head of him but he has recently retrieved a book from the library in the school that he attends that he was not privy to and of course as we know education is always power so we follow Donso as he tries to make an understanding of the truth versus what he has been told his entire life. A part of that is this character on the cover, Li Long, who I believe is albino. And she's from an island that's not supposed to exist. She also has magic. She's found her way into Basa for some reason. You have to read the book to find out. And now they are on a journey to uncover the truth. I did start this one, but I did put it down because I found that I am not a girl who can binge. So I'm going to take a couple of weeks and hopefully I will continue this one on in January. Next, I told you this TBR was ambitious, you guys. It is. Stick with me here. <laughs> stick with me here. We got a couple to go, but stick with me here. Dreams of the Dying by Nicholas Ladzow. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. So if you have Scribd, which is now called Everand, there is an audio and then there is a musical version of the audio. I've had this book sitting on my shelves now for probably like two to three years and I have yet to read it. So we're following, for the most part, I think two characters. We have Jarus, which I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Jarus is a master of coin, and he is sick. He is dying. He is also a visionary, as it says here on the back, and he has some privy information that can help stop a catastrophe. The problem is, as I said before, he's dying. Then we have Jespad. So Jespad is a drifter and he takes on the odd job of entering the dreams of Jadus to try to find out this privy information that can help stop the catastrophe. The problem with that is Jaspar has not only been privy to Jadus dreams but also his nightmares and it is affecting him. So I believe if we look at the cover I believe that this is Jadus, this is Jaspar and this is all of the nightmares and all of the information that Jespad is supposed to bring back to two individuals who has helped him into the mind of Jadus in order to help win this catastrophe or stop this contract catastrophe. So I definitely want to continue on in the realm of the elderlings. And so I had the crazy idea to start this world over from the beginning, but I decided that that is not going to work for me. If I really just want to continue on in the world, I already know what I like about the world so far. And I will definitely start this world over again, known as the realm of the elderlings, but I want to continue on. So this one technically the Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince is the prequel to the Farsia trilogy. However, after going to the Robin Hobb website, which I'll have the link down below, you can read this before you read the third trilogy, which is the 20 Man trilogy, the first book being Fool's Aaron. So both of these are going to be rereads for me. I decided to reread this one because I know it says that I have read it on Goodreads, but I only remember part of the story and I definitely want to go back and reread it over again. And then Fool's Aaron, we, we lose a beloved uh, person in here, a beloved character. But I want to have my heart broken again, obviously. God Killer by Hannah Canner. So this is the gorgeous Illumicrate edition. This was definitely a cover buy. And I put this one on my TBR for December because I thought that I would get a chance to read this book very early on and then decide if I wanted to order the second book. However, <laughs> I was not un I was not able to get to this one, but I definitely want to read it soon. So 
it's on the TBR. I don't know if like I'm going to do this thing where whatever books I do not read for the month of January, if they're going to push over into the month of February. And I know I've seen some people do that. So I don't know. I might go ahead and try that. Let me guys, let me know if you guys do that. So over the summer, I did wrap up Miss Born Ever 1. I thought I would go ahead and move on. This is the only book that I own from Miss Born Ever 2, but I'm a little hesitant about this one because it does have like a time gap we are in the world of the same world that miss born ever one takes place in but i believe it's like 500 years before and i'm absolutely terrified of time gaps that usually do not work for me but i'm going to go ahead and try it i want to continue on with the series because i have wrapped miss born ever one up so close to this one that i remember everything that happened i don't really think it makes sense to like start this over again being that over the summer i read books two and three so we're going to try and continue on so i've been on the fable app for the past couple of months and fable usually has this thing where well, they have a feature where if you click on a book, you can go under similar and you can look at books that are similar. So I have tried to group together some books that I feel, one, I own them, right? And Fable says, Fable says that they are similar. So I'm going to try and group some of my books together to see like, you know, if I, if I like it, if it's for me, possibly make a vlog out of like some of the books that are supposed to be like similar. So here we are with three books. We have Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano. This one follows a couple. I believe we start off with a young man whose family does not treat him well for whatever reason, but they are well off. He goes to college. He meets this young lady who has a family that's the exact opposite of his. They seem to be very close-knit and he loves her and this is their story. That could absolutely be a lie, but I picked this one up because it was a literary fiction and I absolutely adore this kind of like portrait thing that they have going on with it. The same reason why I like Sirens and Muses. I don't know, those type of covers just really speak to me. I also have Pineapple Street by Jenny Jackson. This also follows a family who is well off. We have three sisters. Each have chosen their path in life. One married for love and blah, blah, blah. And so it's supposed to be a story about family, love, and class. Um, this is also a debut, which I did not know. It is rather short. I'm debating if I want to take this one on vacation with me because it is rather short. Also, let me know if you guys take books that you have already read on vacation or if you take like new books on vacation or like if you take both because I'm considering like should I take something new but if I don't like it especially being a mood reader it's like do I rely on my other unread audiobooks but at the same time I have this ambitious TBR that brings us to the last book Happiness Falls by Angie Kim this follows also a family we have a father who has gone missing. I don't know if he was like kidnapped or something off of the street, but the only person who has some information that can help further this process in finding the father is someone who does not have a voice, as far as I know. And that, my friends, is my very ambitious TBR for January. And yeah, let me know what you're going to read for January, are you going to wing it? Do you have things planned? What genres are you reading? And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.